God's keeping the night watch for you and for me. Bright stars are watching the world as it sleeps. Shepherds watch over the little white sheep. The lighthouse is shining for ships far at sea. As God keeps the night watch for you and for me. So sleep. Well, hello again. Welcome. My name is Ryan. This is my lovely wife, Janine. And you're watching another episode of Sundown Cafe. We're glad you're here. We hope that you enjoy this uh, song that we're going to share with you. And so without further ado, let's dive right in. What's the song? How did it come about? Well, the song is I Believe God. Nice. And I don't know who wrote it. Don't know where it came from. I know that um, we used to sing it in high school. And um, that's all I know. I've searched and searched the internet and couldn't find it at all. Wow. Um, but it's something that came came up um, earlier this year. I was just singing the words over and over again mm -hmm. and just sat down, played it out one day and thought, you know, this is a really encouraging song. Yeah. Um, also, we were on our other channel, Better Living Concepts, mm -hmm. uh, we were going through David Wolf's Sun Food Diet. Yeah. And um, the first six chapters are really about belief right? right and um the thought or, or just the concept of belief and is something that we've talked quite a bit about with yep. better living concepts and mm -hmm. and i just kept thinking about how this song um, how the words of this song how the concepts that are presented in this song affect us as human beings yeah and um so yeah that's how this this kind of got on our list, and uh, we talked about doing a whole series on belief. Yeah, uh, we'll see if we end up doing that. But <laughs> we're going to start with this song, and see where that goes. So, do you want me to share the lyrics? Yeah, go ahead and share the lyrics. Okay, so it's I believe God, I believe God. Ask what you will, and it shall be done. Trust and obey. Just thank Him and say, I believe. I believe God. Every promise in the book is mine, every chapter, every verse, every line. All are blessings of his love divine, every promise in the book is mine. Mm -hmm. And then it just repeats, I believe God, I believe God. Um, you know what I love about this song? What? It's short, uh -huh. it's literally just one verse and one chorus, uh -huh. if you will, mm -hmm. that repeats. And I can imagine the person who came up with it mm -hmm. just walking down the road one day yeah. and, you know, in, in a state of prayer or thankfulness mm -hmm. or what have you, um, just talking with God as they're, as they're walking down the road and they come up with these lyrics and it just, it, it's yeah. powerful. What they actually say to me is uh, really just an encapsulation of the gospel itself. Cool. It kind of has a little bit of all of it there. We're believing in God. We're asking. Uh, we're trusting and obeying based on what we heard mm -hmm. uh, from the asking or what we experienced. And then we're thankful for it. Mm -hmm. And um, because of that, we believe Him even more. So yeah. that's kind of... And then, of course, the promises, mm -hmm. right? So all of that is all wrapped up in, in uh, an element of the gospel. And so yeah. I, think that's, I think that's part of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, on one of our journals, the, the cover of it says... Um, all things are possible to him who believes, mm. right? And um, yeah, I was just thinking, how, what does that mean? Like, how does that work? A mm. um, couple of thoughts on belief. Mm. And again, some of these, um, um, Sun Food Diet yeah. uh, by David Wolf yeah. kind of really hammers home on the concept of belief. Yeah. Um, the idea of you become more than you were before right. in your belief system. Mm -hmm. um, the foundational law, he says, cause and effect, what you sow you shall reap. Mm -hmm. uh, the seed is the word of God. Uh, the most fertile soil in the world is found in the human mind. Mm 
Right. When you have an emotional thought, it will begin to materialize in your mind. As long as one nurtures seeds of joy, achievement, and destiny, these things will follow in abundance. Mm -hmm. Thoughts are things, thoughts are seeds, thoughts are energy. Energy pulsates, sending ripples into the fabric of time and space, right. affecting all things. As a man thinketh, so is he. That Psalms uh, 23, seven. Yeah. And just a couple others. If you believe you can do a thing, or if you believe you can't, in either case, you're right. Right. That's a Henry Ford quote. Um, you don't believe what you see, you see what you believe. Wow, interesting. Mm -hmm. Beliefs affect your physical body. Um, thinking in terms of what is useful for me to believe. What is useful for me to believe? Uh, do my beliefs help or hinder my goals? A change in beliefs inside our minds creates a change in others' minds as well. Mm -hmm. And if we can really support others, by believing in them, it's a huge step towards, um, towards, you know, um, uh, other people's benefit. Uh, yeah, their, so, their experience. Yes, yeah. if we can show our faith in in others mm -hmm. as well, mm -hmm. it helps them to live more full, a mo live a more full life. Right. Um, yeah. So in. Uh, in my thinking of this mm -hmm. uh, and kind of cruising around and trying to find some information on these sorts of um, mm -hmm. concepts or processes, um, I found some interesting articles. Um, <clears throat> one of them was talking about, um, you know, he says, uh, simply put, to believe in God is to possess confidence in Him. To believe in God includes an acknowledgement of His existence, uh, of course, but true belief in God is more than that. If we believe God, then that naturally leads up to a posture of trusting and obedience to His Word, uh, which should lead us to a deeper relationship with Him. Uh, and it's not enough to simply believe. Um, uh, we must move into a relationship with Him. And uh, we do that by following the example of Jesus uh, that He set for us and by learning about uh, His teachings and actually uh, following them and doing them. Uh, and this is where uh, trust and obedience. This is where this is what he says. This is where trust and obedience reside. Mm. I thought it was kind of cool. Yeah. Um, and then Hebrews eleven six. Um, and I looked this up actually in two different versions. Uh, in the NIV, uh, Hebrews eleven six says, uh, "And without faith, uh, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that uh, He rewards those who earnestly seek Him." And I also looked it up in the Complete Jewish Bible, which I like uh, for, for many reasons, but oftentimes the Complete Jewish Bible will actually pull from the original Hebrew context mm -hmm. more, more closely than, say, the NIV or something mm -hmm. like that. So that same verse reads, And without trusting, it is impossible to be well-pleasing to God, because whoever approaches Him must trust that He does exist and that He becomes a rewarder to those who seek Him mm -hmm. out. I um, just thought that was interesting. Yeah. Uh, and in James 2, verse 19, uh, you believe that, uh, I'm sorry, you believe that there is one God. Um, sorry, I'm having a little difficulty here, a little small. Uh, you believe that there is one God. Good, even the demons believe that. So what, and, and the reason I put that in there, I know mm. that seems a little harsh, but mm -hmm. if you think about that, um, it causes us to move beyond facts. Oh. Right? Um, even those who believe that God exists but don't necessarily follow him or or um, you know take into their own spirit his uh, his way of being if you will mm -hmm. um, they never move beyond the facts and so it becomes really really just kind of head knowledge right so um, mm -hmm. so that's where uh, we believe something because we can see or comprehend with our mind the reality of a thing into a relational experience that becomes the matter of the heart. Uh, that is to say that we experience the beauty. Hmm. That, uh, because of that thing, uh, whatever it is that we are believing in, um, if we experience it in the way that we um, are supposed to, like it, you know, as with God, we experience the beauty of it. I thought that was pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. um, 
So yeah, there was an excellent article that uh, I would really encourage you to check out by John Piper on his uh, website called Desiring God. <clears throat> and we can leave the uh, link down for that as well. Um, in it, uh, he says it this way. Now we see that it must include a spiritual perception of the beauty of God and his plan in making these promises, a beauty that, um, a beauty that we will enjoy to the full as the promises come true. In other words, saving faith in the promises of God includes spiritual enjoyment of the God of the promises. Uh, he says, I don't want to overstate it. I only say that saving faith must include this enjoyment. Enjoyment of the glory of God is not the work of uh, the whole of what faith is, but without it, faith is dead. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, so I just um, thought that was a, um, kind of an interesting twist on on the relationship that we have um, when we believe God and we experience His promises. Um, it really is an experience. And so, yeah, I mean, there's there are many promises in uh, of God in Scripture. Um, in each promise, God pledges that uh, something will or will not be done or given or come to pass. Mm. Um, these are not flippant, casual promises, uh, such as we often make. Um, these promises of God are rock solid. Uh, they're unequivocal commitments made by God Himself. And because God is faithful, the recipients of the divine promise can have full assurance that what God has pledged will indeed be realized. Mm, yeah. Right? And by all means, if you have a thought, just mm -hmm. jump in. And um, But uh, here again, I pulled up a couple of uh, verses. Um, this is Matthew 7, 7 through 12, uh, from the NASB. And then I also pulled it up in the, um, uh, the Jewish Bible as well. Um, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who, who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks, it will be opened. Or what person is there among you who, when his son asks for a loaf of bread, will give him a stone? Mm -hmm. What I like about the, um, the Jewish Bible um, is it says, Keep asking and it will be given to you. Hmm. Keep seeking, and you will find. Keep knocking, right? Yeah. So that kind of gives you the inference that this is an ongoing thing. Mm -hmm. This isn't a one-time event that you're just going to hope to, hope mm -hmm. to gain, gain a promise from, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to continue this. And um, so I, I like that, the way that that uh, is presented there. Uh, John 6 and 69, uh, and we have already believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. And here, um, what caught me was the word no. And when you look in, again at the Hebrew um, translation of that, that is a word that um, uh, really means intimacy uh, in the way that a husband and wife know each other. It's kind of oh. like when Mary uh, said to Gabriel, oh, I have yeah. not known a man, oh, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. And so this, this in this verse, it's the idea that we are to know God, that we're have, to have that intimacy. Uh, so I thought that was interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, in Romans 4.21, and being fully assured that what God had promised, he was able to also to perform. And so mm -hmm. that just obviously reassures us that um, if God is going to share a promise with us, mm -hmm. that it will come to pass, yeah. right? And there's plenty of promises in the Bible, yeah. right? And then uh, the final verse um, I have here in this little section is uh, Proverbs 3, 5 and, uh, five and 6. Mm -hmm. uh, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make your path straight. Yeah. And we've touched on that one before in one of our earlier episodes that we did, but mm -hmm. uh, I thought it was appropriate for this setting. Yeah. Um, so any other thoughts currently that are... Well, just that it made me kind of go digging for some books and I found this one called uh, the New Living Translation yeah. Bible Promise Book for Women yeah. and I think you found one too yeah I found one yeah. too the pro it's just called the Bible Promise Book yeah so the whole idea of every promise in the book is mine yeah every chapter every verse every line so it's basically saying that the Bible itself is just loaded Right, right mm -hmm. with promises. 
And it's kind of cool to take um, a book like this or the one that you found and look at these scriptures as promises. Mm -hmm. You know, in light of all that you've just shared, you know, what a promise means and can we believe God? Um, and is he going to do what he says he's going to do? Um, it does put a lot of these in into a new light. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to do, I think, maybe a couple of posts for Instagram and maybe just a little slideshow with some of these. Nice. So um, we'll do that. But uh, let me see if I can share just a couple. The way that these books are laid out, they have the topic. Mm -hmm. You know, the contents, like this one starts with abandonment, abilities, acceptance, aging, angels, anger, assurance. Then it goes down alphabetically mm -hmm. for, um, yeah, it goes down alphabetically. Uh, I don't see this one on here. When disagreements. Okay, here we go. This one is under patience. I thought this is one of my favorite sections, I think, yeah. is patience. Um, when, let's see, when disagreements get you frustrated, may God who gives this patience and encouragement help you live in complete harmony with each other as is fitting for followers of Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Then all of you can join together with one voice, giving praise and glory to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So the promise is that he gives patience and encouragement, right? Mm -hmm. um, when your patience is tested, patient endurance is what you need now so that you will continue to do God's will. This is Hebrews 10, 36. Then you, then you will receive all that he has promised. God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. Afterward, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. Wow. James 1, 12. Mm -hmm. Um, when you must face your fears, I will give you peace and you will be able to sleep with no cause for fear. Wow. That's Leviticus 26, 6. Um, That's big in these days. Yes. Uh, this one, Philippians 4, 6 to 7, which it actually makes me think of um, our three little birds song, <laughs> is don't worry about anything. Yeah. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Amen. So that's a real powerful one. Yeah. But yeah, just a little book that's loaded, um, zooms in on the promises. Yep. And of course, according to the lyrics of the song, um, every promise in the book is mine, every chapter, every verse, every line, all are blessings of his love divine. Yeah. His love, blessings of his love. Yeah. Every promise in the book is mine. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I had some ideas along that line too that, yeah. that I'll share with you now. It's um, uh, basically, I think that it's important to note that uh, all the promises that are offered are mm -hmm. ultimately for the sake of, of both God's glory mm -hmm. and for uh, the realization of his kingdom. Right. Uh, so even though we experience the benefit of a promise, we shouldn't think so small that we approach it from the position of selfishness. Mm. Um, but rather that we give thanks. Uh, and here again, this is alluding to the, you know, um, thank him and say, mm -hmm. um, but rather we give thanks for the acquiring of the promise so that his glory and kingdom are advanced. Uh, but these promises help us to encounter the beauty of God. And thus we continue the building of the relationship. Mm. That's kind of what we were talking about a little bit ago. Um, and yeah, this is just kind of an aside. Um, mm -hmm. His promises also include those with a negative result or an outcome. Oh, yeah. Right? So those yeah. promises are true also. Okay. And those are also ours. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and so that just helps. Those are just guideposts. If I, that's the way I think about them. I think mm -hmm. of them as guideposts. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just saying, so be careful what you ask for. Um, oh, yeah. Be careful what you keep seeking. Yeah. Right? and where you keep knocking. Ooh. Oh. Right? So take account. Oh, wow. For where you are, what you're doing, and the, and the things that you encounter. And if they're not of God, seek, ask, or knock elsewhere. Interesting. Right? Um, and then finally, the greatest promise of all, of yeah. course, is John 3, 16. Yeah. And, and for God so loved the world that he 
gave his only son mm -hmm. that um, so that everyone who believes on him will not perish but have everlasting life mm -hmm. right so yeah, yeah. so I, 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 it was just a little twist that you know every promise is ours yeah and wow so yeah quite the lyrics are very powerful they really are um, very thought-provoking yes yes it gives a lot of hope I think um, a book that I was reading the other day talked about um, paradigms that people in a problematic situation often can't see the answer um, because they're not willing to to release or let go of their their belief system mm -hmm. so um, shifting our belief systems are opening our minds to new concepts new ideas um, might be something that that could be helpful right in you know various situations and for someone who maybe ha has never considered believing in God that might be a shift huge right um, see check out what the promises are right um, test him mm -hmm. right and see how how that faith works in your own life right so um, yeah just just a thought there yeah that's good mm -hmm. so yeah uh, kind of along the lines of these two books the Bible mm -hmm. promise book and uh, yours as well um, I found a page that we'll leave a link for also mm -hmm. um, that that gives just a brief summary of God's promises to uh, in the Old Testament God's promises in the New Testament and then Jesus's promises in the oh, New nice. Testament so we'll leave that as well, cool. that link, and so that that could be helpful as yeah. well. So that sounds great. Yeah. So. Yeah. Any final thoughts, or that was your final thought? Yeah, I guess um, you know we didn't talk about the music very much at all because there's I don't really know much yeah. more about it. Um, it is repetitive. It's got a, I think it's kind of a cute little. You know, yeah, you it's know, fun to play. You know what it makes me think of as yeah. I'm thinking about this here. We've talked about this before in that um, songs can have a major impact on yes. you and they can help you in times of need. Mm -hmm. And when you internalize them, and this song is so easy to internalize, but yet it's so powerful mm -hmm. in its message. And so I would definitely encourage you to, to listen to our version of it and then um, find, you know, uh, time to to sing these uh, lyrics for yourself yeah. and um, just really enjoy them. And it, oddly enough, it kind of reminds me of another project that we've been working on, which yeah. is the story of your grandfather. Oh. And mm -hmm. you had mentioned earlier in this episode, mm -hmm. um, just a few minutes ago, about the ripples, mm -hmm. right? And that's what made me think of that. And although I've never met your grandfather, mm -hmm. The, the man of God that he was mm -hmm. and the blessings and promises that he was bestowed, was bestowed upon him in his life mm -hmm. and um, the abundance of his family and all of that. Although I've never met him, mm. my life has been impacted by him. I would, I would venture to say that thousands of people have been impacted by him through his children and their children and how they've moved throughout the world. Interesting. Um, and so just taking that into consideration mm. too that um, when we are blessed um, by the promises of God mm. uh, that's kind of what I was alluding to earlier um, that we can then be blessings to others that we can share that blessing and um, um, you know just uh, let everybody know that that God's promises are for everybody right so yeah yeah Good points. Yeah. Uh, Thanks for sharing that. Mm -hmm. um, so along the lines of the music itself, you know, when I'm when you search for this song, there are other songs that will come up that oh. are entitled "I Believe God," right? But they're different, um, and most of them, I thought it was interesting, are slower hmm. in their tempo. Um, they're more. Uh, reflective maybe mm -hmm. um this one has got a really snappy. you know yeah really it, yeah. snappy beat to <laughs> yeah. it um it moves along you almost kind of want to just you know um da -da -da -da. Yep. Da -da -da -da. um yeah it's so it, it's got that that joyful yeah. cheerful energy to yeah. it um 
And so I think for that reason, I saw the promises, see the promises in this as being uplifting yeah. um, and encouraging. Yeah. Um, every promise in the book is fine. And also because it's got that, you know, happy kind of a, just a happy yeah. tempo. Yeah. Um, it's something that you can carry with you um, and sing along. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. So. It's a rhythm that brings some joy. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Ask what you will and it shall be done. Yeah. Trust and obey. Just thank you and say, I, I believe. believe. I, I believe, believe God. God. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And we hope that you've enjoyed this uh, time. And um, stay tuned uh, for our version of this song. Um, it's a toe tapper, as I like <laughs> to say. Um, I hope you'll enjoy it. Have a nice night. One, two, Keeping the night watch for you and